Hi, welcome to Aeretech Solutions. Let's continue the timers, how to program 8051 timers. So in previous session, we discussed about how to calculate number of pulses and what is the pulse period you are going to get based on timers counting process. Based on the capacity of timers, you are aware of it can count 65,536 pulses for one rotation. Now, you need to deal with these timers by using standard SFRs. Every feature from microcontroller deals with some standard registers. Coming to 8051 timers, so you should be aware of these standard registers T mod, T con, TH1, TL1, TH0, TL0. So these are the registers related to timers programming. So you need to understand what is T mod and what is T con and what is your TH1, TL1 and TH0, TL0 here. So coming to T mod, the name itself T mod stands for timer mode register. So this register which helps us choose the timer, which timer you want among the two timers, what timer you are trying to use in the application and what counter you are trying to use. The name itself timer or counter, which means you have the possibility you can use either timer or counter, not both at a time. Okay, the complete selection of timer is purely decided by the T mod register from microcontroller. And you need to aware of these 8 bits and you need to affect the logics of these 8 bits based on application. Now, so coming to T mod register, it is a 8 bit register and not bit addressable register. From 8051 SFR registers, few are not bit addressable and few are bit addressable. The meaning bit addressable is very clear. You can access the individual bits in programming. If the register is not supporting not bit addressable, you need to assign the entire value of register in programs. Okay. So if the register is not supporting not bit addressable, you need to decide or you need to decide the entire register value, not single bit. But whenever you are attempting for bit addressable, you can access the individual bits. Okay. So that C you will write in the sample program. But try to understand the T mod register functionality and T mod register is helping us to choose the timer or counter in different modes. The first bit from the T mod register which is gate, the name itself gate bit, the by default all bits logics are zeros. So every register has its own default logic. So you need to remember this default logic of SFR registers even from other microcontrollers you start understanding default is also very important what is the default position of these bits okay so by default all bits are logic zeros what happens as a programmer you make it logic one or logic zero okay so coming to this gate bit if you are making logic zero for this gate bit then your timers counting process which will run normally without any external inputs but coming to this gate bit logic one then you need to provide external pulse if you want to start the timer counting process generally your timer starts keep on counting 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 so this counting process if it is logic 0 it doesn't need any external pulse but if you make it logic 1 for this gate bit it requires external pulses to start this counting process across the int x pins so if you are dealing with gate bit from timer 1 bits you need to provide external pulse across int 1 the same description for gate bit 0 from timer 0 also if you are giving if you are making gate bit logic 1 from timer 0 bits you need to provide i2 low pulse across int 0 so this is easy to understand like if you take a normal clock and stopwatch the normal clock which is running continuously without any external input. See, if you just keep the battery and if you turn on, it is keep on counting seconds. But where a stopwatch, if you want to start uh, counting seconds, minutes, hours, you need to provide external button. Then only it's, it start measuring seconds, minutes, hours. This is the major simple difference to understand how gate bit is 1 and how gate bit is 0. If gate bit is 0, no need of any external input. But if you make it gate bit logic 1, you need to provide external pulse across the respective pins. If you are dealing with timer 1, then provide your external pulse across INT1. And if you are dealing with timer 0, provide your external pulse across INT0. So that is the gate bit functionality from T mod register. And the second, second bit 
counter slash timer bit. So this bit logic decides whether you are trying to use timer or counter. The difference between timer and counter is very clear. Timer which is counting the pulses from oscillator which is treated as internal source and counters which are counting external objects or external pulses from source sensors or any any pulse generator or whatever it is okay so that is, that is the laws importance of c slash timer bit the logic zero which decides timer and logic one counter and what about m1 m0 bits so here m1 m0 bits are mode selection bits the timers which are which are decided for the capacity the timers capacity which is changed according to the mode so the timers which are allowing to work in four different modes as two combinations because of these two bits you can deal with four combinations so 0 0 combination the timer is mode 0 which is 13 bit and 0 1 combination which is mode 1 which is 16 bit and 1 0 combination which is mode 2 this is 8 bit mode and 1 1 which is mode 3 and this mode is split timer see in this mode selection what makes difference so if you are dealing with 13 bit mode the timer capacity is becoming only 2 power 13 which is 8192 in this case the timer capacity is 8191 0 to 8191 it cannot count more than that because of mode 0 selection if you are selecting mode 1 the timer capacity is 0 to 65535 because 16 bit so 2 power 16 equivalent value is 65536 and what about 8 bit so 8 bit is 2 power 8 which is 256 and the other name of this 13 bit is and 16 bit and 8 bit this 8 bit is auto reload mode and from this 13 bit so you can you can you can make minimize the quantity of or counting process of timers okay so this will make much difference in mode selection and the final mode is split timer and this split timer mode the timer is divided into two parts half of the register higher byte is used for counter and lower byte is used for timer mostly the split timer mode which is not used for delay generation this is applicable for the other four bits also here if you are dealing with timer zero use these four bits and if you are dealing with the timer one use these four bits so that is that is our selection process of either timer zero or timer one you are trying to use timer one then make it there is no change from the logics of these four bits if you are dealing with timer zero no change of logics for this higher higher byte which is msb of registers okay so this is how finally your t mod register is helping us choose the timer or counter in four different modes okay so you want to go with the values so what are the uh, values supported by this t mod register for programming purpose you can prepare a table i'll give the simple table for this t mod register whether it is t mod hexa values so it depends on timer or counter what timer you are trying to use in which mode and mode 1 what is the value of t mod and mode 2 in for timer 0 what is the value of t mod and mode 3 what is the value of timer 0 and coming to counter what is the value of t mod register and timer 1 suppose and counter 1 so this register values which may help you the final hexadecimal value decides which timer or which counter you are using for programming okay so whereas timer 0 mode 0 if you want to timer 0 mode 0 just deal with this only four bits so keep it logic zeros for msb part and mode 0 means what the mode you are expecting for gate so maybe gate bit logic is 0 by default because most of the cases the timers are used for delay generation and delay generation not required any external pulse so I'll make it gate bit logic zero and you are looking for timer or counter so timer timer means logic zero and mode zero means these two bits are zeros finally the hexadecimal value of this register is zero zero h and what about mode one so timer zero mode one so mode one means so this bit logic is going to change 
and according to this the value is 0 1 h and mod 2 means 1 0 this is 0 2 h and mod 3 means 1 1 0 3 h what about counter 0 so counter 0 again you need to deal with these four bits if you are looking for counter change your counter slash timer bit logic as 1 and other two bits are 0 so this is 0 4 h and for counter 0 mode 1 this will become 0 1 this is 0 5 h and for mode 2 this is 1 0 and 0 6 h and for mode 3 0 triple 1 which is 0 7 h and coming to timer 1 so timer 1 means keep this lsb part remains 0 no change from the lsb part and here a timer 0 means again gate 0 counter slash timer 0 m1 m0 0 0 so 0 0 h is the timer 1 mode 0 and for timer 0 sorry timer 1 mode 1 so timer 1 means this 4 bits and mode 1 means triple 0 1 and 4 zeros this is 1 0 h and 2 0 h and 3 0 h just this part is moved to msb 4 0 h 5 0 h 6 0 h 7 0 h if suppose you are looking for both timer timer 0 and timer 1 at a time then you need to enable so 1 1 h 5 5 h 2 2 h 3 3 h so that is depends on if you are looking for two timers and two counters okay or one timer one counter so you can use such cases depends on the value of tmod register you are deciding which timer which counter selected for programming so finally tmod register is helping us for only selection now what about control so the second register from sfrs which is tcon and tcon register is helping us control the timers so again your tcon register is a bit addressable register the difference between tmod and tcon is here tcon is bit addressable and tmod is not bit addressable out of 8 bits from tcon register the lsb part which is dedicated for interrupts and msb part is used for timers so here the timers which are dealing with only 4 msb bits and 4 lsb bits are used for interrupts so here coming to tf1 tr1 tf0 tr0 tf1 means timer 1 flag bit so the default logics again for this tcon register bits are zeros what happens if you are making logic 1 and what happens if you keep logic 0 okay out of this 8 bits the first bit is tf1 which means timer 1 flag bit and this is not affected by our programming so based on the timers counting process your tf1 bit logic is going to affect so which means whenever timer reaches the maximum value so maximum value means according to the mode the maximum value which is changing so if you are dealing with mode 0 maximum value is 8191 and if you are dealing mode 1 65535 mode 2 255 mode 3 which is not used for delays so this maximum value which will reach by the timer the tf1 logic becoming 1 so suppose whatever the initial value you, me you measured in the program but whenever timer reaches maximum value and it overrides from maximum value to 0 in that case your flag bit is becoming 1 this is the only flag bit for us you can monitor or you can check the timer is rotating how many times whether it is rotating one time or two times or three times just by noticing this, this flag bit logic you can understood that your timer is running two times one time or three times okay this is the only option in programming so you need to deal with this flag bit compulsory based on number of rotations or based on how many pulses you are looking to count by using timer and the default logic is zero and the state of logic for your flag bit which is changing whenever timer overflows from maximum value to zero suppose if still the timer is not reaching maximum value the logic remains zero so that is the importance of flag bit from tcon register and the second bit tr1 which is timer 1 control bit timer 1 start or stop if you want to make timer start make sure this logic is 1 
and if you want to stop the timer make the make sure your logic is zero okay so by deciding the logic of tr bit you can keep timer start or stop okay the same description for other two bits tf0 and tr0 so tf0 which is timer 0 flag bit if you are dealing with timer 0 then work with these two bits tf0 and tr0 if you are dealing with timer 1 deal with tf1 and tr1 so tf0 bit for dedicatedly for timer 0 and this is 0 default and when it is becoming 1 whenever timer 0 overrides from maximum value to 0 in that case your tf0 becomes 1 and tr0 bit for start timer 0 or stop timer 0 keep logic 0 timer 0 stop and keep logic 1 timer 0 start so these the, the two independent registers you need to know if you are trying to program timers and what are the steps you need to follow to generate a time delay by using timers okay so you will see the simple steps what are the timers related things like first step is step one select the timer by using t mod register so t mod register value finally decides what timer you are trying to use in programming and the second value second step is assign initial values to th and tlx registers see yesterday you did the initial value calculation the initial value you need to convert into hexadecimal and go with this thx and tlx registers so thx why i am using thx and tlx here if you are dealing with the timer 1 use th1 and tl1 if you are using timer 0 use th0 and tl0 so this is the uh, thing you need to remember based on timer you need to use these registers okay and third step is start timer so what is the bit you need to use for to start timers tr1 or tr0 if you are using timer 1 make it tr1 bit 1 and if you are using timer 0 make it tr0 bit 1 and fourth step is monitor timer flag bit until it sets to 1 so because you need to wait until it sets to 1 because whenever you start with some initial values you need to wait for rotation so when this flag bit is becoming 1 whenever it overrides from maximum value to 0 so this is the only thing you need to check for timers whenever it reaches maximum value automatically flag bit becoming 1 and fifth bit is, fifth step is if you have more cycles counting then repeat the process from step 2 suppose still you have more number of pulses more than one cycle you need to repeat with the initial values again and keep timer start and monitor again wait for flag bit and by clearing your flag bit so repeat the process don't keep your flag bit keep one you need to clear it and repeat your process and once your counting process is over then finally stop timer so these are the six steps you need to follow to write a simple delay program by using timers so I, i'll share even simulation video for delay generation and its applications thanks thanks for watching